welcome to The Shoe Luck Show. I'm Charlotte Collins and joining me on the sofa today are Heather Steele and Tor Cardona. Welcome ladies. Today we'll be discussing how we're all feeling about commuting to our desk in the office rather than our desk in the kitchen. We're also going to be chatting vintage following the launch of Oxfam's new initiative, Secondhand September. And plus we'll be revealing our latest guilty pleasures. Later, Santina, aka the very stylish Hughes of White, is here to talk us through her top five outfits for trans season dressing. Plus, trained to the stars, Shane Collins is back with the second instalment in his 10 minute workout series. This time it's abs, so start warming up that core. Plus, Jack from Lockdown Liquor and Co. is showing us the stylish way to serve their delicious cocktails. But first, we're back. We're, we're back. I mean, it doesn't really look that different, probably, because we've been back for the show. Um, but we are back in the office three days a week. And that means the commute is back. You know, it's been kind of not really commutey when we've been coming in for the show over the last few months, but there's no avoiding it now, is there? Heather, obviously, you're coming in from Brighton. How's it been over the last few days? Yeah, it's been all right so far. I've been getting slightly later trains to avoid peak and avoid the people, but generally, apart from delays yesterday getting home, which is just part of the course, (laughs) yeah, it's been fine. Um, Is it, like, have you found you have been able to avoid people? It it is quieter at that time? Yeah, it's definitely quieter. I think my only thing is that I think there should be hand sanitizer things on individual platforms forms because if you're changing trains I often am there kind of wanting to use I've got my Mm. own obviously but that's my my one thing I'd say they've got them at the stations but on the platforms would be quite nice to get off the train and have a quick go maybe Mm. it's worth wearing plastic gloves can you touch your phone if you're wearing plastic gloves I think so like it works I guess a touch screen no but the buttons obviously oh do you have buttons on your phone no. no. <laughs> okay. Got the day, got the day my BlackBerry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so true. Uh, so yeah, no. I don't know because otherwise gloves would be a solution, but quite difficult if you yeah. know, listen to a podcast or whatever. That's great. Um, Tor, how are you finding it? Have you been on the train the last few days? So yesterday I got the bus in. Um, mm-hmm. I'm lucky I have a couple of options. Mm-hmm. Um, the bus actually is fine, but it's so much slower than the kind of the tube and the train combo. Um, and this one I got the, tra- the tube and the train combo, which was fine, but I just, I, really, I just. The whole thing made me feel so anxious. Because people aren't behaving or just generally? Just generally. There are lots of people who weren't weren't wearing masks, which I know people, some people are exempt and that's fine. Um, But it still made me feel quite anxious. Yeah. Um, And I think the changing thing as well, as you were saying, that I'm just so aware that the exposure is so much higher. Yes. And And I also... I'm not sure that the amount of people wearing masks are the amount of people who are exempt as well. Like, sorry, yeah, not wearing I mean, masks, I mean. Like, it seems to be a very high proportion of people running around without them. Yeah, yeah. I know, I agree, yeah. I agree. But just lots of hand sanitizer. Yes, yes. I agree. What, what else can we do? I know. Well, I've been driving in, which I was doing pre, pre-return to the office as well for the show. And obviously that was like before the returns to school. Um, and it was taking me like 40 minutes door to door. And it's taking me an hour and 10 now. Oh, wow. I know. It's really noticeable that, yeah. that London traffic. And oh, I, I don't know about you on the bus, but I mean, it's so, driving in London now is just such yeah. a pain. It's just really boring. It is, it is. I know, lots of road, I mean, they've taken like the opportunity now to do all these roadworks and anyway, know, that's anyway. so interesting. But anyway, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a mission, but it's really nice to be it here, is. isn't it? And to be back in the it's office. It's so nice. And so nice to have a desk chair. That for me is the best thing. I'm like, oh, no oh more backache. God. That's fine. I know, I know. Um, all right. Well, speaking of commutes, um, uh, picking up a coffee on the way to work is, I know it's a staple for the three of us. Um, <laughs> and Presa Monger has launched, I mean, the most incredible new initiative. Heather, this launched today, right? Yes, it's called Pret your barista and yeah it's basically 20 pounds a month for a coffee subscription service and it means you can get up to five hot drinks a day included that's, that's brilliant insane. value so hang on I, I was about to do the math five times 30 if you were to do that every day that's what 150? Almost 150 yeah yeah um coffees a month for 20 pounds yeah that's mad yeah and it obviously doesn't hurt it could be a tea or one of their kind of colder drinks or you yeah know, you can mix it up so it's anything that a barista would make behind the counter exactly but there's Isn't sort of smoothies right? and things there's quite a, w- a wide range there's cold brew stuff but there are a few things obviously you can't just like mainline some of the more expensive <laughs> drinks okay. but generally speaking yeah if your normal latte or whatever yeah, you might get normally brilliant yes yeah, up to five a day obviously not all at once so you can't be like kind and buy everyone on okay, your desk fine. one at once they have sort of 30 minute restrictions okay um, but seven days a week as well. So even if you like wanted them yeah. at the weekend, you I mean, can... what an incredible way to get yeah. business going. I know a few of the girls in the office uh, have made use of it already this yeah. morning. It launched today. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, Ali and Daisy getting their coffee in early. Also, it's clever because I think if I was there, I wouldn't just buy coffee. I'd be like, oh, actually, that's fancy true. some little wow. chocolate rice cakes or some chocolate almonds or oh, a sandwich or that's the you know, very good. Do point. you think that's other good. brands will t- you know copy or follow suit? Maybe it's genius. Isn't Maybe it? yeah. I think perhaps it will spur on more kind of 
loyalty schemes as yeah. opposed to like stamp cards. Definitely. Yeah, maybe. Why is stamp cards not digitized, by the way. They, the, some, some places well, are. And some places aren't. Yeah. And they all should be. They should be. Um, I feel like you have to ha be a company with quite a lot of money in order to do that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I want, I, it makes me worried about small coffee shops yeah. and independent chains who won't, no. definitely can't compete with that, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the profit margins, I suppose, on a cup of coffee for prep it's versus true. a local calf will be obviously exactly. quite different but no it's a good idea to get people around and did i say the first month is free as well when yeah. you sign up so yeah. oh my god so you sign up and, and you, you get could your sign, sorry you could sign up today and have a 150 free of, coffees of, yes or for the next chocolates. Month. Or well, I know what I'm doing or, after this. Yeah. Yes, I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> uh, will you guys use it? Do you go near a Pratt in your day? We, we've got I, one maybe like a nine minute walk from Yeah, here. I don't, but for a month of free coffee, I think I can manage that extra <laughs> 10 yeah, minute you walk. You can make a detour. <laughs> yeah. And I think also, like, yeah, it doesn't have to be just on your commute. Like I say, it could be at the weekend. So I feel like even if you only had like three or four over a week, you'd still be yeah. getting a really good value. So yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, I mean, net, net. Net. Worth doing. Yeah. Definitely All right. Wow. Well, we'll put a link in the show notes for how you can sign up to it, but I'm pretty sure everybody's already frantically checking their phones. <laughs> I'm sure you found it by now anyway. Um, okay. From coffee to conscious fashion, um, it is Oxfam's uh, second hand September, uh, where the charity encourages all of us to uh, stop shopping and to either buy consciously, to donate, whatever, to get involved with the sustainable fashion movement. Um, and uh, we also happen to have launched our new Conscious Edit on Sherlock's, which ran yesterday. Uh, this is our new monthly roundup of all the best new conscious fashion that you need to know about. Um, so let's talk, I, I want to know first of all what, what you guys have been doing. Secondhand September, you know, are you inclined to, to join the movement? Will you not be shopping this month? Or are there other services that you've used to be a bit more um, sustainable with your fashion? Mm. Talk. Actually, this is really timely you say this because in lockdown, I, like many others, had a good old clear out of my room and I did sign up to the Thrift Plus Farfetch um, collaboration mm -hmm. where they which I believe is part of the thrift the thrift one that yes. they do it anyway mm -hmm. but in, with, with Farfetch they send you these amazing kind of like big paper bags and you can choose how many you get and then you just stuff them full of your clothes you want to, you would otherwise send to the charity shop and then someone comes and picks them up and then that's it and then you get every time they sell it on thrift you get a little voucher. It's so yeah, clever. Yeah, such a good idea. So you can so do clever. it in two ways. You can either do that and get far fetched vouchers, or yeah. you can ask them to donate to a charity of your choice. Yes. So whatever they make, you can have donated. Which they is, split the shares. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, idea. it's great. Yeah, it's charity so shops aren't that readily available right now, are they? Yeah, I've yeah. got a big, yeah, like again, similarly, I've got like a big pile of clothes and shoes that need to go to a charity shop, but they're always like not available mm. for dropping off donations. But I didn't know about that. Yeah, so, it's yeah. definitely that's, worth looking at. Thrift it's really is such a good service. They were on Drag Dragon's Den, actually. I think that's how they kind of rose ah, It's such a good idea. It seems like, why hasn't... Yeah, I know exactly. that's the thing with Dragon's Den. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Damn, why didn't they think that first? <laughs> yeah, it's totally. such an obvious, yeah. brilliant idea. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Heather, I feel like you're a bit of a thrifty shopper. Have, are you a second-hand kind of girl? Yeah, definitely. At the moment, it's more sort of second-hand furniture that's catching my eye. Yeah. But no, I do, I do like going to... You know, vintage shops and going through the rails and charity shops as well, especially, you know, certain areas. Yes. have got some very good ones. Mm. If there are sort of well-heeled locals nearby, totally. it's quite good to mm. head there and, yeah, get some gems. But, yeah, no, I'm all for it, definitely. Yes. There's another service we were talking about, speaking of Farfetch, this is also in the Conscious Edit, uh, where they will take your old designer handbags and sell them for you. Um, and, again, in exchange really for cool. vouchers. So, yeah, you know, so you, can, you, can really get a bit, you can get a bit of fashion back as well. Exactly. Um, kind of quite reciprocal. Um, okay, well, Oxfam's... Um, um, new, uh, well, it's actually not new. I think they did this last year as well. But Second Hand September initiative. First of all, it's got this campaign fronted by the incredible Michaela Cole. Oh, she's amazing. I mean, she mm. looks incredible, doesn't she? Yeah. Like, what a cool I spokesperson love her. for the movement. <laughs> um, and isn't it amazing as well that there's now this Oxfam pop up in Selfridges? We should say Selfridges so cool. are really supporting this, and you can now shop Bay Garnet, who is one of the you know, leading fashion uh, editors and she has curated this edit for Oxfam for Selfridges. Um, I mean, how cool that you can now oh, shop so secondhand cool. there. That's really so cool. cool. So, I mean, yeah, so cool. So um, they'll on, have done the hard work by picking good pieces as well because sometimes that's so many charity shops you've got to sort of wade through and prepare exactly. to have yeah. a lot of time to do that. Whereas if somebody amazing's already edited it, 
great. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's all the good stuff. At Selfridges are really, they've, they've got a Vestia Collective pop up in there as well. Her, you can rent yeah. from there too. Yeah. I mean, they're really like, they're pretty hot on the yeah. Yeah. sustainability front right now. So that's I need to go to Selfridges. Yeah, do. Yeah. They, really, they really are. Yeah. They, they know what they're doing. Um, okay, we thought we would end. Um, I have no segue at all for this, but by talking <laughs> about our guilty pleasures, um, I think this has come off the back of the selling sunset phenomenon um, of the past few weeks. I feel like I'm the only person that's watching this show oh, or who hasn't like binged it in like I a day. I do think you'd like it, Charlotte. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure I will. I'm sure I will. <laughs> um, so, Heather, that is your guilty pleasure. Yes, I've been enjoying that immensely. Over. It's one of those things, you know, when you suddenly get into a series and then like a week later they're like oh and now the third one's coming out and you're like yeah <laughs> um, well, so I timed that quite well um so yeah I did enjoy that but I've also I've never really seen it before but yeah recently on Netflix they've put every episode of Don't Tell the Bride so I've been it's a classic. watching that and yeah we were talking earlier about the highlight that I've seen oh, yeah. so far is a Beauty and the Beast themed wedding which have you seen that seen one well. was, it was it you telling me about this yesterday yeah and that is just heartbreaking it's so funny it's I, priceless and I, he dresses up as the beast, yeah, right? He's got like furry feet and claws oh. and like a prosthetic nose and fur. Like it's just it is amazing. amazing. And she had to wear the bell outfit. Mm. Yeah, a yellow netted wedding dress and poor thing. And it's like, in the woods, right? Yeah, she was and in the rain, in the mud. Oh, the mother oh of God. the bride is fuming. Yeah, it's excellent. And does, does he think this is a good idea? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. I can't with this show. Yeah. So Honestly. I actually find this show quite sad. Like, as in, it makes me so upset for these poor brides who, these clueless men, I mean... I, I mean, they also willingly sign up for the yeah. show, so I wouldn't feel too sorry for them. But don't you think you... Like, you wouldn't sign up for the show if you thought your fiancé was the kind of guy who would throw you a beauty in a beast-themed wedding, surely? I know. I don't maybe, know. Maybe it's just worth it for the I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I think... That's what, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you would. But no, definitely. If you haven't watched any episodes, watch that one because it uh, it's excellent. Okay. It's so good. Okay, so that good. is definitely a guilty pleasure, Heather. I can't it say it's stupid though yet. Um, so what about you? What are yours? I have a couple. One I'm less ashamed by, which is Grey's Anatomy. I'm just... Yes like totally and utterly obsessed with Grey's Anatomy. I don't think I knew this about you. Um, oh, really? so, so I quit Grey's, maybe we talked about this before, but I quit Grey's at like season nine-ish. Okay. Okay. Um, I, you know, I had a good yeah. run, but it just, it got a bit much. But you said you're on season... It's just, well, I think I've just finished season 16 and I think they might be on 17 in America, but I'm waiting for that. I didn't to... know it was still running. Yeah, I, oh, it's just Is it not time to die a death? No. I mean, that's no. the good phrase though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, it... Has anyone left? Any of the original cast members? Uh, no, no, there's still quite a few there. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I just love it. Yes, and it's not got a bit ridiculous? No. No, what is it you like about it? There's the mix of the the kind of relationships and the emotions and the scientific stuff I just mm. absolutely love. Yeah. It's like the most ideal combination. Yeah. Those first it. few seasons are just incredible. Yeah. I can't vouch for later, but God, they're so good. Yeah, so good. Um, so good. And your other one is? It's four in a bed, but I can see Daisy saying we're running out of time, so I will <laughs> hide my shame. Very quick, I love that as well. So four good. in a bed is what? Sorry, very quickly. It's like come dine with me, but it, when they do, when they go to people's B&Bs. Oh, right. Have you never watched No, that sounds very Afternoon Channel 4 to me. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. It's yeah. on the 3pm or something. Yeah. <laughs> sure. okay. So good. Well, I think, I think that's all we need to know. Um, yeah. Well, very quickly, I volunteered mine as Love Island Australia, or Love Ireland, as they call it. <laughs> um, but um, the even better news is that Love Island USA started last night Ooh. on ITV2. Um, they also call it... Love, Love Island. Like, I don't know, no, that wasn't it at all. <laughs> the emphasis is on the island, which blows my mind. Um, anyway, they're in Vegas. It's now, Ooh. it's, it's happening Ooh. now. What channel um, is it on? So it's on ITV2. And it's like in it, they've obviously taken over like the top of a hotel in Vegas, oh. and you can see like all of Vegas around That's it. That's the villa. They've all been quarantining for weeks. Oh um, my gosh. They're COVID free. Um, so yeah, it's. Um, it's going to be good, I think. Oh, I could. Um, oh, you get yeah. Charlotte. Yeah. The only difference is it's not Ian Sterling doing the voiceover. Oh. It's an American guy, but very similar humour. So it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, you've only missed one. It started last night, so, well, so yeah. get watching. Um, all right, thanks, guys. Uh, next up, Santina, aka Hughes of White, is here with her top style tips for transitional dressing. But first, Jack, founder of Lockdown Liquor, is here to show us how to serve their cocktails in the chicest of ways. Hi, guys. I'm Jack Derling, co-founder of Lockdown Liquor. And we're going to show you two ways of how to serve our pepino. The pepino garden party favourite super refreshing, gin-based with hints of mint and cucumber. Firstly, get your chill bottle from the fridge, shake. We're all gonna do our classic signature serve with the pepino. Take a nice filled coupe glass and empty. Open the bottle. And then we're just gonna garnish with cucumber around the rim place on top. 
And there you have it. For those guys feeling more fancy, take a pre-chilled flute glass, a bunch of mint leaves, and clap to release the flavor. Fill in the bottom of the glass. Pour in the pepino. And stir. Salud. Thank you so much, Jack. That was fab. Now, I'm joined by Santina, aka Hughes of White, one of our favourite micro-influencers on the gram right now. Her feminine on-trend style makes her a must-follow, and she's here today to talk us through her favourite ways to update your wardrobe for the new season. Welcome, Santina. Hi, thank you for having me. It's so nice to have thank you. Thank you. I, I love your style, and um, viewers or Sherlux followers, <laughs> people who love Sherlux will have seen your fashion fix. Back in, when was that? July, maybe? Yes, back in July I did that. Exactly, you took yeah. over our Instagram and yeah. got so many great outfits, so go back on our Instagram and find it um, <laughs> if you haven't seen it. And I'm so thrilled you're here today to no, talk to us you. about your outfits. Thank you so much. So you picked out five key pieces that yeah. you probably could have been wearing over the last month or so, yeah. and you're going to show us how to wear them over yeah. the next month or so. Yes, just really easy pieces to take you through. So, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start with a pair of long denim shorts. Yeah. Where are these ones from? So these ones are actually from Topshop. So just your Topshop normal Bermuda cut-off denims. Um, and I love them. They look great on um, and they go with anything. Mm -hmm. So perfect, perfect pair of shorts to take you through to next season. Um, as opposed to your normal short cut-offs, which I think will be too short. Um, easy to style with anything. Put some high heels on, um, help elongate your legs. It's brilliant. People are nervous of this shape. Yeah. It's, not, it, it, it's not the most flattering if you're just kind of standing in the mirror looking at yourself in them. Mm -hmm. How do you suggest you style them so they feel a bit more flattering? I mean, to, to make it more flattering, I just help put some um, high heels on. Mm -hmm. So that help elongate your legs. Yep. Throw on an oversized blazer and then you help portion out the size there. Yes. And it just hide covers your bum yes if yes. you don't want to if you've eaten too much over the summer it's perfect for that um but they're my favorite favorite kind of shorts to wear at the moment mm -hmm. um i'd actually even in the summer months i'd wear them more than the cut off so good a bit could. more grown up I think, yes. the cut -offs. yes so how are you going to be signing these now for this season so for this season so whilst we transition i will be styling them with your just a basic top so mm -hmm. this is just your white basic top from top shop um it's a nice body i like the feel of it when you pop it on um and i like the contrast of the black and white yes um throw in a pop of color i love, love this blazer this my is favorite. our care right from yes. from just uh, last season it was Beginning last season yeah. yeah i think it's my favorite favorite blazer i've had so far actually and what about this color why does this work with the monochrome so for me it works the best because it's not an over-the-top lilac yes yeah. so it's subtle which would take you nicely into the next season give a little bit of pop with your bermuda shorts and you're good to go to be honest great so, Can I, think, I love the square neckline yeah. on this as well mm -hmm. there's that that's a very kind of yeah. high-end trend right now so nice to see it on the high yeah. Um, accessories with this look, you talked about wearing heels. Yep. So for the accessories, I've popped on, so I said to help elongate your legs, yes. these gorgeous tune shoes. Mm -hmm. See if I get these out I here. I love these. They're perfect. So nice. I have to say, really comfortable actually. So you've got nice quilted padding, mm -hmm. pop them on and obviously help elongate your legs. Mm -hmm. So it makes me look a lot about five inch taller than I actually am. Great. Which um, I'm happy with. So. And that's also presumably yeah. because... Personally, I wouldn't wear anything that cuts off the ankle no. with that shape. You've got to have a bare ankle, right? Yeah, so I wouldn't wear boots with them, yeah. I think. So these are the perfect sort of transition shoes I'd wear Agreed. to style with Bermuda shorts. Agreed. Very Bottega-esque. Yes, I would say that yes. as well. Yeah. And a bag? Yeah, I love so this bag. It's my favourite. It's gorgeous. I think you can't go wrong with by far bags. Mm -hmm. They'll take you from season to season. I think it's an investment piece as well. Um, but I love this one the most because it sort of reflects and complements the colour of the shoes mm -hmm. along with the jacket. So it's a good colour combination. And I love the I like the brown, there's a yeah, bit of everything in there. It really is. Gorgeous. Um, okay, your next look is um, a knitted dress, not a kind of thick jumper dress, but let's have a look. This is no. um, a Zara piece. 
So this one is H&M piece. Oh, sorry, H&M. Yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this one's H&M. So I've seen this everywhere. I loved it. I love the color. I love the, the sort of the way it fits, the feel of it. It actually feels a lot more expensive than it actually looks. It looks, well, I think it looks expensive. It looks yeah. lovely. Um, and I love the color details. They're all about color this season, um, which I love. But what I've done here is instead of opting for my normal size, I've gone for two sizes up. Yeah, I mean, this looks big. Right? Yes, yeah. it is. It does look big, but it actually looks really, really Really good on so it sort of just hangs off effortlessly I think that's the look I was going sure. for um, and it's it's really nice on so a good tip is to go two sizes up if you can mm -hmm. if you can get the item it's brilliant it really goes with anything and so you styled this did you add a belt um, I didn't with this look, mm -hmm. so I just without the jumper. Let's put on the belt with the jumper, sure. but like I said, just throw it on effortlessly and you're good to go out the door. Fab, so let's look at it with the jumper. Yeah. Um, so, so this is a nice chunky crew. Oh, that looks so nice, that one. It's God, lovely. those are good. I'm not allowed to touch it, but those arms are <laughs> so substantial. I love it. Honestly, I get so much love for this jumper on my Instagram and my social media. It's, it's so my favourite, favourite knitwear at the moment. From Pretty Lavish? Yes. I would never think of them as a knitwear destination. No, and I, I didn't I didn't normally, but I was taking a look on their website and I found this um, and again I've gone a size up mm -hmm. for it to be oversized um, so you can opt for normal size if you want it but I sort of like my clothes to be a little bit more boxy and oversized feel um, and then pop on about great clinch it at the waist mm -hmm. and you're good to go out the door with some nice chunky boots fab I was gonna say so you added chunky boots yes. with this Yep, so we've got these boots here. Fab, very so cool. So these are June boots mm -hmm. again, but at the high street at the moment, just full of chunky, yeah. chunky boots, lace-ups, Chelsea-style boots, whatever, and I think it will go really nice for a daytime look. Yes, great. Um, and a bag as well. Yep, so with the bag, I've opted for... Another great potato yeah. dupe. <laughs> it really is. Um, again, it's another June mm -hmm. um, bag. Um, and it's perfect. You can throw it over a crossbody, pop it on your shoulder, mm -hmm. wear it as a clutch. I love it. And I think the colour really complements the scheme of the dress. Yes. So for me, it's a no way. It'll go with anything as well. So hopefully next year, I'll still be able to wear it. You definitely will. You could also be adding those original June heels to the dress with the bag yeah. and have more of an evening. And then you're up. Well. Yeah, exactly. So pieces I like to wear and wear again. Um, some more neutral heroes now um, with a suit. Yes. Yeah, so this is my favourite suit of the moment. So I think when we transition to new, the next season, people think you have to opt for a black um, suit, but I, this is a neutral colour. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. But what I love most about what French Connection have done here is instead of your normal blazer, you can just tie it up on the waist. Lovely. Um, and then you've got, which could almost take over as a top. Well, that's Team it. With a pair of jeans. Often, if yeah. you want to wear that look with nothing underneath yeah. a blazer, it can be quite difficult. You know, I've got some where the buttons yeah, start down here. So you're like, what do I do? I'm at the chest. Exactly. So, yeah. so great that with yeah. the tie waist, you don't need any other you know, you do. any other layers with this, do you? No, and I really wouldn't. I think as we transition, this is just light enough to wear mm. on its own. Don't pop it on. Like I said, you can wear it as a top with jeans. Yeah. It's perfect. Do you wear them? Yeah, I was going to say, and you wear the trousers separately as well? Yeah, you can wear the trousers. I mean, I actually wore it the other day with the Pretty Lavish jumper. There you go. We've got and some trainers and it's a really great daytime look, I think. Capsule wardrobe yeah. here as well for you. <laughs> um, okay, and what shoes did you add to this look? So, you can pop those back. Yeah. Yeah. For this look, I popped on some by far mules, um, which are the leopard um, skin ones. Similar can, to the ones you're wearing today, Yeah, right? very similar to these ones. Or you could even pop them with any of these, I yeah. think. They would actually really go complement the colour and the tone of the... Depends what look you're going for, if you're daytime or, or evening, I think. Would you add trainers to the suit as well? For yeah, I did. I wore it the other day with trainers and my own pretty lavish jumper. Yes. And then clinched on at the waist and went out. Perfect. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, okay, the fourth look is with a pretty yes. top. This is... So I think... We're seeing collars everywhere. I mm -hmm. think the bigger the collar, the better, yeah. as they say. Um, and I love this. And I saw this from Topshop. Mm -hmm. um, and I just thought it was really pretty. I've seen a lot of white at the moment, white big collars. Yes. So I thought black's actually quite a nice nice way to take totally you into agree. the uh, next season. It's pretty. It's poplin style, so it can add a bit of dimension mm -hmm. texture to your look. It's really good. This looks quite long. Could you get yeah. away with it as a dress? Maybe not quite. I think you could, I don't think I could. No, you're not quite small get where you and were perhaps not. I did try it, I won't lie, okay. but it's, um, it's quite small, I think. But okay. I've just said it's a long tunic, yeah. Got it. Um, and you've added uh, great jeans to this. Yeah, well. I was just mentioning um, earlier, these are probably the best pair That's of jeans I've actually found in a long time. Um, and they went wild on my social media. Yeah. So I bought the Zara Slouchy, I don't know if you remember, everyone, uh, yes, everyone was wearing them. them. Yes. <laughs> um, so they sort of, 
they were lovely. They just came out too wide They're very for blue. me. Yeah. yeah. So I thought MC Hammer, that tight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. um, but these are brilliant. These are really slouchy, but really help stay in and just help shape your body a bit better. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I went a size so because you, you can actually um, pick your length. For oh, your lips, the best, yeah. Which is even not better. enough high street paces. No, they do that. don't, and mm -hmm. I think they should do that a lot more yes. because it really does work. I went um, an extra length up so I could scrunch them at the bottom, yeah. and then they look really good as a nice pair of baggy jeans. Is the key with this shape to have a bit of ankle on show? Then is that why you rolled them up? Yeah, that's why I rolled them up. Yeah. I want to wear them, show, show my ankles, pop out some toes because it's still warm enough to do that it at is. the moment. That's true. Um, so we're able to get away with that. Yes. But I still think you could wear boots with these. Yes, you definitely could. Um, it depends on the top bit. Got it. Very nice. Okay. And the fifth outfit. Let's have a look. This is, I'm very excited about this gorgeous <laughs> dress. It's so pretty. I do love this dress. It's really, it's, it's a stunning piece. Yes, um, so it's my it was my favorite summer dress. Yeah. So I love pieces you can just take in your wardrobe and then you can wear it throughout the whole year. Mm -hmm. So I think you could get away with wearing this even through the colder months yeah. with some knee height boots. But the colors, it's complementary to the autumn tone. It's really pretty. It's long sleeve. Yeah and it's free flowing, so it's still light enough to take us through. Yes. Um, and then team it with a blazer or an oversized blazer or a jumper on top and you're you're good to go for this. It's so season. true, there's something really autumnal yeah. about this color palette, but you can, I mean, we've got these gorgeous pink June yeah. heels here, mm -hmm. which I would love to see those together as well. Yeah. But you styled it with? So with the, this one, I started with my uh, Garni yes. boots. So these are the... Touch them. <laughs> there you go, these we'll, are I'll the, hold these. Do you want to hold these? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these are the khaki ones. So um, they that. do them in every single color, but I like the khaki. Key. I've just thought it actually yeah. complements. Well, there's the green in the dress in there, totally. So it really complements. And with the blazer as well, right? Yep. So we've got the oversized blazer on top. Throw that on. Fab. Where's um, that blazer from? This one's actually Zara. Cool. Um, so, but there's loads. Topshop have done a really good um, sort of style of this. Is in fact, it's exactly the same. Okay. Um, and I'd go size up. So I've gone yes. to a medium on this. I've gone for a boxy size, roll up the sleeves, pop Love. on your boots and a nice bag. And that's a good daytime look, I yes. think. But then, like you said, if you want to go into the night, you can just pop on those shoes. Love it. Some high heels. It really is nice. Fab. Thank you so much, Nadina. Yeah, I welcome. love how Thank affordable you. everything is as well. Yeah, so that's really important to We're going to be doing some shopping yeah. soon, I think. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, obviously, all of the products discussed in the show will be linked in the notes below. And for more of Santina's seriously cool style, do give her a follow at Hughes of White on Instagram. Next up, grab your trainers and your mat. It's time for workout with Shane and Alice. <laughs> Today I'm joined by Virginia Fisi from Vestia Collective. Welcome Virginia. Hi Georgie. For people that don't know Vestia Collective, can you sum up exactly what it is, what's the offering? Yeah, so Vestia Collective is um, the leading global platform to buy and sell pre-owned desirable fashion. So it's people like you and me who have unborn items in their wardrobe and want to make a bit of money with them um, and just sell them to our global community of 10 million members. We had to show the iconic monogram, Louis Vuitton. I mean, it ages so well, doesn't it? Well, I mean, th this, this pair leaves me pretty speechless. More jackets here, we've got the most incredible Ooh, Christian Dior. Dior. This is an Hermes <laughs> Collier de Chambelt and they are just about as chic as it gets. What is more desirable than a pair of Chanel clip-on earrings? Into I mean, these earrings. are complete We're all guilty of overindulging a little in the summer. So if you feel like it's time to kick those abs into gear, we have just the man for you. Celebrity trainer Shane Collins of Cobox fame is here to show us a 10 minute ab workout guaranteed to give you that washboard look. Okay, ab day. Who doesn't love ab day? You love ab day? I love ab day. Love ab day, great. Today's really simple. We're gonna give you 10 ab exercises. We'll do them for 45 seconds. You'll get a little breather in between. And that's it. Super simple, ab day is in. Should we start? Yeah. Good, right. First exercise is called a dead bug. Take your knees to 90 degrees, hold them there. Take your hands up in the air. Now this is the bit you need to get a little coordinated on. That's where we start class, a dead bug. We're on in three, in two, 
in one, 45 seconds, we're in. So, things to think about when you're doing this exercise. Your lower back stays like super glued, like pressed into the floor as much as it's possible to do it. And then I like to take a big breath in here, and then as I extend my legs and my arm, I blow it away. I breathe in, and then I blow away. Breathe in, perfect, Alice, nice. And you'll notice Alice's knees, they come to 90 degrees. They don't come in any further, because then your abs kind of stop working. So those knees stay at 90 degrees, and that's perfect, easy. 10 seconds, how quick is this? 45 seconds, nothing. You got seven, six, Alice, stay with it for five, for four, for three, you get a little breather, in two, in one, nice easy start. Next one is called a butterfly crunch, and I've just realized they're both got to do with insects. Anyway, right, bring the soles of your feet together. So your knees will go wide, hands go behind your head. Do a crunch and touch your toes. All the way up, crunch, touch your toes, all the way back down. 45 seconds, we're in it. And the same thing, as Alice is going back, she's gonna take a breath, and then as she throws herself forward, she's gonna blow that breath all the way out. And then those feet stay super glued to the ground, knees stay wide, 25 seconds left. Being the host isn't so bad, you know, it's just like, just get to watch, I get to tell you off for not doing it properly. 15 seconds left, stay with it. Keep control of your breath. You'll keep control of the exercise, I promise. 10 seconds, stay with it. Come on, Alice. Behind, breathe in. Big blow away, last five, last four, last three, two, one. Take that little rest. Now, I'm gonna get you to change position, roll into a plank position. So a low plank position, Alice, anywhere you wanna face. Low plank. Now, Alice is gonna rotate, take her right hand to the sky, come back to center, left side to the sky. 45 seconds, we're in. It's called a rotating plank. So nice and slow, nice and controlled. Keep your hip up nice and high, there we go, as you rotate. So when you get there, don't let that hip sag. Don't let your hip sag stay nice and controlled. Easy, perfect, perfect. Could not do it better myself. And because you're here, I don't have to. That's good news. Coming up on 15 seconds, if you feel like you've gotten the hang of it and you wanna speed up, that's fine, that's on you. If you wanna stay on Alice's pace, perfect. The more control you have of core and ab exercises, the better. We have five, we have four, Alice. Got three, got two, got one. Rest, little sidewinders. I'm gonna give you a heads up, Alice doesn't like sidewinders, but show them what it looks like. High plank position, very important. If you see Alice, her shoulder, her elbow, and her wrist are all stacked on top of each other. Then her right knee comes to her left elbow, back, left knee to right elbow. We're in, 45 seconds, we're on it. Bum stays low, and listen, you can, Take your breath, and as you drive your knees in, then you blow it away. If you keep control of your breath in your ab exercises, you will control the exercise. The exercise will not control you. Perfect, Alice, all the way in. Nice. And look at, look at her pace. It's not crazy fast. It doesn't have to be. The more control you have, the better. Shoulders just up on top, Alice, a little bit more. That might happen when you get tired. That's fine. Notice it, and then readjust. We're on this. Inside 10 seconds, we're almost on five. Make it four, make it three, make it two, make it one, rest. Okay, we're gonna go into a little leg extension. So you're gonna lie back down again, that's good news. Take your knees to 90 degrees. Now slide your fingers underneath your bum so that it tilts your pelvis up and your lower back goes straight into the floor. Knees at 90 degrees and then extend them low and then all the way back in, 90 degrees. Don't let them come in any further. Because once you, Alice, come in a little further, once you get there, your abs stop working. So you want to keep them at 90 degrees. It comes in there. Nice, so you have that control all the way through the exercise, always, out and in. And if you feel like your lower back is coming off the floor, just round out your shoulders and lift your head. Extend out and back in. Makes it a little more difficult, but it should help push that lower back into the floor. We're here, we've got six. We've got five, we've got four. Come on, Alice, three, two, one, rest. Stay right where you are. Toe touchers, legs go up in the air. And again, not straight like that. Point them a little bit away. Your left hand comes to your right toe. Your right hand goes to your left toe. Come on, Alice, up, up, reach me. Reach my hands, come on, touch. 
Has anyone else noticed she hasn't reached my hands once? Like literally not once. Come on, Alice, up, yes, she did it. There you go. Legs stay straight. If you need a break, then take it. This stuff is tough, I know. So if you need a break, shake it out, come back in, go again. Alice got 25 seconds, come on. Legs stay straight, up and touch, up and touch, up and touch. Make it to me, high five. That was a high one. Come on, high zero. Come on, Alice. You really need to try to rotate that upper body. Reach and rotate that upper body. Good news, Alice, we got five, we got four, we got three, two, one, rest. We're almost there, low plank position. So low plank is on your forearms, same thing. Your shoulder right on top of your elbows and from here, you're gonna step up onto high plank, back down into low plank. High plank to low plank. Now, try to suppress your inner Beyonce. You do not want your hips going anywhere. Dead stiff, nothing. Dead straight, no wobbling, none of that. It stays solid and then your core is what's keeping you steady. Your core is what's keeping you steady. So take your time. Forearms, step up. Try to make sure that your hips are not moving. Try to make sure your hips are not moving. Stay with Alice inside 20 seconds. We're almost there. How, like time just means nothing. It's disappeared. We've got nothing left, Alice. 10 seconds left. Come on team, we have this. We have this mind over matter now. You're struggling. Don't listen to the little voice in your head. You got three, you got two, you got one. Rest. Mountain climbers. Yeah? yeah? Now, mountain climbers you can do really, really fast if you want. That's like a cardio thing. I like to do them nice and slow. So plank position and your knees come into your chest. In, in, in. And let's do it fast so they know what it looks like. Now that's how some people do mountain climbers. I like to slow it down. So slow and pull your knee in all the way to your chest. Pull it in. Further, Alice. Further, Alice. Further. <gasps> Alice is struggling, you might be too, but it's fine, we're almost there, we don't have long left, what are we, seven minutes in, 25 seconds, bum stays down, shoulders on top of your elbows, on top of your wrists, and if you need to take a break, that's fine, you should, unless you're a machine, take breaks, come back in stronger, Alice, come on, 10 seconds is almost on us, 10 seconds is here right now, stay on it team, come on, cheer lots. got six, got five, got four, got three, two, one, almost there, you still talking to me? No. Okay. Scissor kicks and bicycle crunches to finish. So you're gonna lie on your back and then you're gonna kick your left leg and your right hand together. So left leg, right hand, scissor kick, comes back down and then switch legs, 45 seconds. To make this a little easier, you can bend your knees. Come on, Alice, we're in, come on. So you need to bend your knees. That will make it a little bit easier. To make it a little more difficult, Never let your feet touch the floor. Let's challenge Alice and see if she can do it without her feet hitting. It's a totally different exercise. It's a totally different exercise. If you can't do it, don't worry. Next time you come back and do it, try to do at least a couple with those feet off the floor. 15 seconds, Alice, come on, 15 seconds. Come on, reach, Alice, come on. Last 10, last nine. We have one exercise left. This is the end in five, in four, in three, in two, in one, bicycle crunches, Alice. So if you notice, she's getting her elbow to her knee, elbow to her knee, but one leg stays straight all the time. And people go crazy and do these fast, don't do that, don't be one of those people that do it fast and cheat. Nice and slow and controlled, and when we hit the last 15 seconds, we can speed it up. Let's go, this is it. This is our last minute, we're nine minutes in. We got a minute left. It might feel like an hour, but it's not. 10 minutes little lab. Nice and slow, nice and slow. The lower your legs go, the better. The more you rotate, the better. Keep those elbows back, Alice, keep those elbows back. Now, when we hit the last 15 seconds, we're going for this, right? We're all in, we're bought into it. 15 seconds of speed. Alice, you're in for speed, they're in for speed. We go on three, two, one. 15 seconds of madness to finish this off. Come on, bicycle crunches, left, right, left, right. Elbows to knees for seven, for six. We're done in five, don't stop early, don't you dare. For three. For two, for one, rest. Yes, team, good job, we smashed that. Well done, Alice. I did nothing. But anyway, we'll see you again, well done.
Thank you so much, Shane and Alice. Thanks also to Santita. What a great show to get September going with a bang. As usual, all the products mentioned in today's show will be linked in the notes below. On our next show, one of the UK's most celebrated florists, founder of Wild at Heart, Nikki Tibbles, is here to talk about the new trends in tablescaping. And Sherlock's regular Georgie Fraser is back with another Women's Health Clinic Q&A. This time she's answering your questions on your menstrual cycle. So please let us know any questions you may have in the comments below. Also, please do let us know if there's anything else you'd like to see on the show. From fashion to beauty, interiors to wellness, we're listening to your ideas. So do please keep them coming. Don't forget to also thumbs up, subscribe and tell your friends. Bye-bye.